agenda this week. Let's get into it. Our topics, uh, it's going to be an overview of Simba Chain. Uh, then we're going to talk about uh, Stellar. It's going to overview of Stellar, and, and Tyler is going to be handling handling that. And then uh, how do we bring uh, Stellar and Simba together, and why is that a great combination? And we're going to be talking about that. And then, of course, uh, Tommy Cooksey, our, our, our great master trainer, who who many of you know well if you've come to our previous webinars, he'll be doing a demo of the Simba Chain platform, but specifically on utilizing it with uh, the Stellar protocol, because that's what we're here for. So with that, uh, let's get right into it. Uh, blockchain. So a little bit about Simba Chain, you know, in our history. And you know, we were born in 2017. Uh, we came out of a, a DARPA Phase One SBR grant to uh, ITAMCO and Notre Dame Center for Research Computing. Uh, that was a research was one of the DARPA's first blockchain. Uh, uh, solicitations they put out in 2016. And for those of you who may not be familiar with DARPA, they, they're a very, very famous uh, event, defense advanced research projects agency, very, very famous research, technology research agency associated with the US government that has funded a lot of the primary and blue sky research that, uh, that, that you hear about going back to the mid 20th century, you know, the first computing chip through the, the early days of the internet through Autonomous vehicles and and uh, and 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 the like in, in more recent times and in 2016 uh, they started getting into to blockchain and Simba was born out of that uh, out, 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 out of that solicitation. Uh, that first contract was to develop a secure unhacking unhackable messaging and transaction platform for the United States military. Uh, since then, uh, the the company has grown uh, its footprint within the DoD and the broader U.S. federal government. And also outside the government, our community includes, you know, rank and file citizen developers, developers of all stripes, really, uh, certainly the enterprise, commercial enterprise sector, uh, and also the education sector. And that's a very key community uh, for us increasingly as well. It, it, and we'll, we'll, we'll touch on that a little bit and why education is so important to us, because it really fits into our broader approach uh, towards innovation and blockchain innovation in particular to enterprise systems where actual people live, where actual production systems you know, currently exist is really important. So that connection, that connecting component is really critical. And then finally, you gotta be able to scale for real world production. You know, you need a system that can work in, that can work in concert with the production systems that are already existing. You know, innovation does not happen in a vacuum. You know, you gotta be able to, you know, you, for instance, you gotta be able to do real data analytics. Because no one is going to fund something, certainly not fund something at scale, if you can't actually be able to get something out of it. So our, our new approach based on GraphQL and our, our graph-based database uh, uh, approach, so you can be able to do recursive searching through the blockchain across tiers within a blockchain and across blockchains is also really important. So ultimately, what is a you know what is our approach to, in, to innovation? What is our kind of uh, how, how do you create a healthy blockchain e you know, e you know, innovation ecosystem? You do it by democratizing, you accelerate, you connect, and you scale. So that is the um, th that that is the kind of the, the the summary of our approach and the way our platform can can support you. And of course, a key partner in that is Stellar. So with that, I will take a breath. Um, that's the introduction. I'm going to move out of the panelist role into the moderator role and move things over to our good friend Tyler. So Tyler, I believe you will be sharing the screen and talk about Stellar, and then we're going to bring it back and talk about why Stellar and Simba are great together. Um, Super duper. Uh, are you switching over to my screen here? Yes, we will be doing that in a second. Bear with us. You are a presenter. All right, fantastic. Let me know when my screen is up. It is. All right. Fantastic. Well, hey everyone. My name is Tyler Vanderhoeven. I'm the ecosystem evangelist at the Stellar Development Foundation. Um, if you're interested in some of the things that we're talking about today, particularly as it relates to finance, be sure and follow me on Twitter at tyvdh. Let's talk a minute about Stellar itself, or or the Stellar Development Foundation. So there's a foundation uh, made up of about 70 employees right now that build Stellar. Um, we're split between uh, San Francisco and New York City. Um, everybody's kind of working remote right now, and then I actually am in Tennessee, so we're definitely remote friendly uh, and now remote required. But uh, we have two main teams uh, working across different design and development. Um, Stellar itself was founded in 2014, 
and our mission is to create equitable access to the global financial system. So Stellar as a blockchain is hyper-focused on payments, on finance, on the, the transfer of value, which we might often think of as, as money, but it can be many more things than that. So really, Stellar is an open payment network. And to put that in our in our official uh, phrase, Stellar is an open network for storing and moving money. Stellar is a blockchain. It is uh, decentralized in the sense that different nodes will collaborate together to arrive at a consistent state for who has what. And as those things move around, you create this network of nodes that then keep a consistent balance sheet of everyone on the network. So it's this distributed ledger and as a blockchain that focuses primarily and exclusively on finance and value transfer, digital assets will be a first-class citizen. So creating assets and moving them around is the focus of Stellar. Uh, whereas in blockchains like Ethereum, it's a secondary class citizen. So um, kind of came after the fact where assets and value transfer was something that was seen as valuable. And so it was kind of tacked on through smart contracts. Within Stellar, we don't have a Turing complete um, language we simply have assets that are moving around which allows us to be very quick and very efficient so you can send transactions around the world for fractions of a penny um, it's very cheap very fast and focused on finance and then we also have a decentralized exchange built in which sounds like oh, okay great whatever um, but this is actually incredibly powerful having all of these things built in you essentially have a global economy built into a single uh, point of entry where if you have value, you can begin to trade and access and move that value around fluidly all through digital, um, this blockchain. It's the uh, the email of money, if you will. We would never think that it would be odd. It would be very odd if I tried to send you an email, but oh, you use Outlook and I use Gmail and now we can't transact. It'd be very odd to think like that, but oftentimes uh, in money, that's exactly how it is, where I can't pay you because you don't have PayPal, you don't have access to the value store that I have, US dollars. Um, so we're trying to bring the innovation that email did, um, bring that to, to finance. So we have lots of different focuses as Stellar is not itself a, a currency that's trying to replace um, other existing financial architecture. We're simply trying to connect existing financial architecture. And so as such, we have a large collection of partners and individuals and enterprises that partner with us that build on top of Stellar to connect existing financial architecture all together so that this system can work globally by moving this value uh, across everyone in the world. So super excited to be here. Uh, Simba is a great partner, very excited with what they're doing, particularly as it relates to smart contracting and building out tooling uh, as, as Stellar is going to be focused on the payments and the ledger and keeping everyone in, uh, in tune and in sync. Um, there's necessarily business aspects of building out logic that are going to be left to other companies. So having uh, enterprises like Simba come on where uh, smart contracting layers are, are built for you and it's much easier to, to jump on and get started is fantastic. So very excited to be here. That's a little bit about Stellar again. If you care to hear more or read more, Stellar.org would be uh, a great place to go. Great. Into the table. You know, and you know, and what you know, th this idea of assets being a first class citizen, Tyler, that you had mentioned, and maybe you can elaborate on that some more. And I think what I'm hearing, you know, Tommy, you can elaborate that our approach to smart contracting and and kind of being able to and write robust smart contracts across a variety of contexts, why that is a good fit, um, with, with a unique fit with, with Stellar's approach to, 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 to assets being first class citizens. Sure. Yeah, I think it, I think something that's important to keep in mind, and I think as, you're, as as individuals or companies are looking like which blockchain should I use, or um, how can I take advantage of some of these advancements in in technology, you want to look for partnerships. You want to look for um, those individuals, those companies that understand that no one entity is going to win the day. Like it's it's teams of people and teams of individuals and uh, assigning to that entity um, that role that they're best suited to to accomplish. And so for Stellar, that's that's going to be the financial layer, right? Where where we have assets and we're really good at keeping track of those assets. We're really good at building decentralized uh, 